Calibu is not a fully developed uh, pedagogical concept yet. It, it, it will never be like a, a book or a program where you can um, look up everything and then you know what to do. Because the point, actually one of the points of Calibu is to create this room where you can develop your creativity uh, freely. And Calibu is inspired by a Danish writer, and in one of his books, the one called Albert, uh, Albert lives in, uh, in Calibu. In many of his stories, he has this Calibu universe. So we are just going through these stories and, and, and letting us inspire from them, and then see what kind of uh, analogies we can make to our school. And, create that atmosphere. I decided to come here because I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. And I really needed like a year to decide what did I want to go after like my school. And for me, this place was something completely different from what I was like doing in Colombia and I thought that it was a good idea to come and experience a lot of new things. The main difference from a high school to all the other common school systems are you don't get grades and you don't have any homework so you can actually work with stuff that you like and that you are interested in and that you see some importance in, instead of working to get some grade. You don't get a grade here. I remember that the first week I, I noticed that I could be whatever I want here and nobody's gonna judge me for it. You could feel like the, the good energy that this place had. If you want to grow as a person, this is like the perfect place to do it. Just to be you and don't be ashamed of it because there's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't be so hard on yourself all the time. It's okay to be a little bit awkward because we all are and you can do stupid stuff and that does not make you a bad person. Um, and that's definitely some of the learning experiences that our students get, because lots of teenagers come and they have maybe not had the best um, school stories to tell because they feel wrong. I was really, you know, School tired? Is that what it's called? School tired? I was doing really bad in school from day one. I was really dyslectic and I was also diagnosed with ADD. I've learned to accept that, okay, you are a bit behind in everything, but I don't let it control me. Like, I, I keep on trying, you know? The thing at this school, I haven't been in a class where I feel like you have to be better than the others. There's classes where I would like to be good uh, at music, for example, so I study that a lot, I play a lot. But it's not because I feel the need of being better than others. <laughs> and I think that's a healthy mental state thing that not feel the pressure of you got to keep up with the others, uh, else you fall behind, because that's not true. My friend Alexander here, he is awful at maths and stuff like that, but he can build whatever he wants and it's just how it's supposed to be.
Well, I've been invited to make coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think of yourself as a part of nature? Like the way that we um, treat the planet or nature now, that, that, that is, it's, it's as if um, we got humans here and then we have nature as two separate things. The crisis that we are in, the climate crisis, has something to do with this division thing. Sometimes you would just have set up something that you should discuss in the philosophy course, but really where it, it, it matters is when you are sharing a cup of coffee or having dinner with your students and then just, or you could be in a workshop and then all of a sudden you're talking about these things and I think that's where the students will really listen and benefit from it. When, when you meet about something else, then you are just there as the person that you are, and they are there as the persons that they are, and sometimes you just listen to music, you are silent, and sometimes uh, uh, the conversation starts from there. That's where we get to know them. It's really interesting because they, they, they just sit with you and they tell you about their lives and you can really create a deep connection and they're not just teachers, they are friends, some of them even family I would say. To be a teacher here is <laughs> we have these evening classes on Wednesdays and I remember that he told us like a little bit about himself and what he did with his life before he came here. I actually found it really inspiring because he decided to go for arts as a degree. He just had no clue if it was going to work out or not, but he did it because he liked it. And so far it's been good for him. So I really, really expect to be like him probably at some point of my life, just being happy with what I'm doing and enjoying life no matter what. I haven't been trained or studied as a teacher. My background is in creative arts. I've been working as a professional painter for quite a few years. When I wake up, I just want to go and be with students and my colleagues to be a part of this crazy circus that is the school. And it's constantly kind of changing in a way that you, you never know what you're going to do. Even though you know you're going to go and teach art, you don't know what's going to happen at all. I'm also a former student at the school. I went to the school 17 years ago. It's hard to describe what was so great for me back then, but one of the things were uh, the free freedom I felt I had back then to do the stuff I really liked. I wasn't told off here by doing drawings in class, because that's what happened in school. But here I had time to do it and uh, space to do it. I remember I was sitting over there in the corner. Decidí venir aquí porque no sabía qué hacer, porque no tenía a dónde ir después de estudiar. 
gusta la, el arte, la pintura en el tiempo libre. A veces voy a pintar y casi siempre voy a pintar solo. Nada más es de encontrar tu tiempo y, y hacer lo que te gusta. El sistema es bastante único, o sea, nada más existe en Dinamarca. Aprendes por ti si sí, tú quieres aprender. Entonces, más que nada es como para encontrar tú lo que te gusta. Ok, so listen up, I just want to say a couple of things about uh, the negatives. When we develop the images, it's going to flip around so that on the paper you'll have a positive. I don't have any formal education in, in being a teacher, so the only formal education I have is as a commercial photographer. And I think sometimes that's an advantage. <laughs> I can get away with just being the, the weird photography guy, which is, uh, which is great, because then instead of meeting a teacher, which can, can sometimes create some, some barriers, uh, they meet a person uh, who wants to, to teach him the skills that he has learned. You don't need a specific education to be a high school teacher. So my teachers are very different. You have artists, writers, actors. You can have any education or none at all. Uh, everyone can be a teacher in high school. I want to give students confidence and feel that they can create. I can give them a taste of what it is like to have a skill. It's like teaching, you know, it's like teaching someone to fish. You'll have fish the rest of your life. Yeah. Ah, I feel so good now. <laughs> You wanna come to music? Going to run now. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> so maybe tomorrow. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye. My place located by the volcano. Sometimes we got ash from sky. think uh, Japan is like hot country but uh, my place had uh, snow every winter. I came in this school because we have many kind of teachers like music, sport, art. I thought I, I think I will find something I want to do in the future in this school. to finish this like we always like start have, one <laughs> have some ideas yeah. but like we couldn't beat to the yeah. end I like uh, being with the internationals they come with like a whole other energy to the school and I think it's so awesome <laughs> and I like to spend time with them. Music will definitely be a thing in my life. You get like a lot of uh, experience and a lot of things up here. And it's just to find those you really like and hold on to them and just keep on being creative. You will meet so many different people that you never ever would have spoken to or talked to at all. But when you live here, you're here 24 hours a day 
you have classes with people that you normally wouldn't socialize with, then you find out that um, people are not that different. In uh, Japanese school, I had a lot of bad memory with teacher. For me, it's a bit difficult to trust them. But the teacher in this school is so amazing. It's so comfortable being with them. Some of our internationals, they come and they say Mr. or Mrs. to the teachers. And then they slowly um, soften up and find out that there's a new way that you can relate to your teacher. I enjoy watching that um, change in them from where they, can I do this? Uh, is it, am I allowed to, to do this? And what are we doing next? To, to, uh, to when they start to realizing the freedom, the amount of freedom that I have here, and, and, and they start to uh, just take it and, and, and benefit from it. And they really blossom, and you can see it in their spirit and their eyes. They just think this is uh, amazing. The freedom that we have here at the school, personally, I think that this is like the only place that you can find something like this. It's really, really strange to just let a lot of young people just be and do whatever they want. Here, you, you can learn to be like really responsible or really irresponsible. That pretty much depends on you. When you just like leave your house with your parents and everything, these are things that probably right now are like really annoying for you, like to learn how to to clean or like wash the dishes and or that kind of stuff. But you will have to at some point. So I think it's quite like a preparation to be a um, responsible grown-up. Part of the, uh, the, the pedagogics that we call Calibri uh, is, uh, is about homeliness and, and, our, um, and, and school is organized in such a way that um, we have uh, six houses where our students live. We have 12 students in each house and one teacher is then connected to that house or the students in the house. Uh, who would be what we then call the house teacher. The task we have there is to uh, create a homeliness for these students or enable them to create their own small family. There will be 12 different people and they will have to um, make it work. Okay, people, so, so then we need to cooperate and collaborate. So my idea is that when you get done cleaning the, either the shower or the toilet, you send a video to the group. Yeah, but do we have an old plan for cleaning the house? Let the Hunger Games start. Part of my job as their house teacher to to convince them that if there's some thing that bothers them, I'm here for them. I can and they can talk to me. That was all on my agenda. Practical things. Then uh, I trust that you would all, all come to me if uh, if you have problems. I'm Bile. I'm a teacher here in several classes. I teach a very practical class called Manibus, which means with your hands in Latin. We're dreaming about making a huge troll, and we will use a lot of secondhand wood for making that. So take a lot of energy into your body uh, and put on the yes hat, and let's go and work on these projects. I will start the class 
I will do the framings, but they can take the class other places. And the students, they're teaching me a lot. And some of them, they're doing it without knowing it. Giant people, how's the energy today? Good? Yes. Oof. Okay. Oof. People working at this high school in general feels that they, they also learn something all the time. So you get something back, which is the beauty of it. I think it would be arrogant to believe that, that I can't learn something from the students. And we want them, we want them to meet a person, you know? <laughs> yeah! I come here as Jacob more than I come here as the, the teacher in arms. I learn from the students and they learn from me and together we learn. It's not a normal teacher-student relationship. It goes both ways. So if you want to be a dictator in the classroom, then this is not the place <laughs> because it is not going to work. So actually, the people who are best at that, that's the winners. Because every time you will get in a new group, and you will have to quickly figure out who are these, these people, which skills do they have, then what, what of my skills could be used in this team. If you're quick at doing that every time, then you will win. Yeah! <laughs> You've got to build uh, a bonfire. That can burn the string. I just wanna be in the sun. Now I'm more brave than before. I'm in Denmark and it's totally different cultures and Japan, but uh, we are still same people and uh, like, uh, sometimes feeling the same thing. I just cannot imagine that I'm leaving the Merc. Jen! Mario! Wait. People up here, you know, it's our place. We share together. I think it's a safe space for a lot of people to be. 
So I think that's why a lot of people enjoy this place. There's so many different people here and we all do crazy st stuff together. I think this place is more like getting comfortable with yourself. Like get to feel myself what I want to do, what I like to do and yeah, sure, I've learned to play music and play football and all that stuff, but that's not really what matters to me. It's more that knowing that I can learn new stuff, I can, I can meet new people, I can, I can do all of these things, so the future is pretty bright <laughs> on the other side. I was independent, but right now I can like take like a backpack and like go wherever I want and don't be afraid just to be alone. I feel like more confident. It has been like by far the best experience of my life. Not the same person that came here like I want one year ago, but I, I can say that I'm like a better version of myself right now. This is so necessary for like a lot of people that are like so lost. Now that I'm gonna like leave this place and maybe go to university, it's not gonna be like that at all. Like I'm really gonna miss this. so much about life um, so you don't come here and say oh, I want to learn about life but when you're done you have learned a lot about life even though you did not seek it out that's just what happens to you high school is about learning about life through people being together it's a type of a home where you were staying for a period of your life. I wanted to say no, but yes, of course you can. Daniel Evans. You gave us one of the best years of our lives and everything that happened here was like so magical. And We're actually all teaching the same thing, which is life but we just teach it through different mediums. We want to create young people who are confident and, and we just do it through our different mediums. This is a very important place um, in the educational system, which is our problem because you don't get the right to do anything by having a high school degree, but in, in, in the life, knowing about life, this is a very important place. You'll be stronger if you go to a high school. You'll know more. You'll be more interested. You'll be more curious. Everything is... It will open up something you never even thought of. It, it just happens. And it's, um, it's very... It's beautiful to see, but it's just very hard to... Uh, to pinpoint what, what is... What are we doing right? But something is right because they are different when they leave us, walk differently when they leave us. They, they believe in life. If they didn't before, they believe in it. And if they did, they believe in, in it even more. Yeah.